Thank you for checking out Cars, Shops, and Collections, and this episode is going to be big. We're at Beacom Auto Auctions, over a thousand vehicles out here at the Las Vegas Convention Center, and we're gonna catch up with Chris Jacobs. You know him from overhauling. He now works for Meekum and Motor Trend. This is gonna be a good one. Come on. I found it's Chris Jacobs. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, man. man. Really well. Thanks really for well. having us, man. What what is your day like here at Meekum Auctions? You're getting ready to go. What's your day going to be like today? So we already had our production meeting, uh -huh. uh, where we kind of you know get the lay of the land for how the day is going to go, and then um, we have about an hour and a half in between that meeting and getting mic'd up and ready for rehearsal. So what I like to do is just kind of walk around, get the lay of the land, see which cars are where, because you know they're constantly shuffling. And I'm kind of going in my head which previews I'm gonna do. And then at uh, 10.30, which is in about a half hour or so, we'll get mic'd up, do a rehearsal for the uh -huh. opening segment. And then at 11 a.m. we're live. Do you know the, the order that they're coming in or just yeah, the basic I mean, idea? You know, they, they, they do a good job here at Meekum of uh, staging the cars. Everything is by number, mm -hmm. lot number. So I know what's kind of coming up by just walking through staging. Okay. Um, so I do most of my previews from staging, but occasionally I'll go out in the room and, and do something that's pretty special, a little teaser for something that's coming up later in the show. So people stick around to uh, check that out. We're standing behind something special right now. Yes, we are. Tell us about this car right here. Well, I'm the proud new owner of this 1968 Plymouth Sport Fury. Yes. 440 under the hood. I bought it yesterday. The first car I've ever bought at Meekum. The second car I've ever bought at auction. I bought a uh, 87 Grand National about five years ago. Had that car for two years and then sold it for more than I bought it. But I wish I still had it because the value on the 87 Grand Nationals are skyrocketing right now. Um, so, uh, you're and not also, supposed also to I love that car. Well, you're not supposed to look after yourself. You're not supposed to look at your value. That's, That's true. true. Yeah, you, can't, you can't do that. You sold it and you move on. I, I, I do it from a purely uh, professional standpoint because I like to know uh, what the market is doing so uh -huh. I can speak knowledgeably about it. But um, I digress. Back to this Beauty. bad boy. Yeah, so I'm very, very excited about this car. And I think it was kind of meant to be because my daughter's name is Scarlet. And it's kind of the exterior color here. Uh, which, yeah, uh, absolutely. Know, I think it's very cool. Years ago, I had a Sport Fury convertible. This mm -hmm. is a Fury 3. Um, so it's kind of a, a homage back to that car, which I really enjoyed too. And regretted selling that one too. <laughs> but how does it work? So you, you work with Meekum, you're here, and you just kind of stand in there on the auction block, and all of a sudden you see this, and you're like, get, get my paddle, I'm in. Well, yeah, I mean, I knew this car was on the docket, and I knew it was coming up. I knew when it was going, mm -hmm. so I made sure to be on the, the uh, the, the stage when it was coming across and you know I, I gave myself a budget and I said I wasn't gonna go over that budget and I actually got it for under what I had budgeted myself. That's a score? Yeah. That's a win right totally. there. Yeah. Let's let's walk around a little sure. bit because tell me what jumps out when you see this this one has been sold but the Corvette what jumps out to you in this car here? Yeah, well you know I mean the Corvette crowd is, is obviously very passionate about Corvettes. For me particularly I like the C2s mm -hmm. uh, in particular the 63 which is you know the iconic split window Corvette. Um, this one obviously is a little bit later, it's a 74. So um, this I think is, a, is the C3 um, when they change it to that like Coke bottle style yeah. that the Corvette is most famous for. But you know, Corvette does an amazing job of reinventing themselves, especially with the C8 that's out there now, the, you know, the mid-engine configuration. Um, so, you know, iconic cars all. This is a great one, this oh, Trans Am. Gosh, it's These gorgeous. These have become, you know, very hot market lately. This is a 76, so one year before the famous, you know, Burt Reynolds Trans Am, but, you know, iconic hood emblem, the screaming chicken. You gotta love that, very did recognizable. You, did you guys do a Trans Am on overall ever? We did, Yeah, we did, yeah. And um, it was an amazing build, and that one I believe was a 78 that we did, but Chip did a version of his honeycomb wheels for the mm -hmm. Trans Am, slightly bigger. I think they were 20s maybe, it might've been 1920 staggered. Um, but just, I mean, Boost is known for his wheels, obviously, yeah. so those were unbelievable. Yeah, really you, great build. You did such a great job on that show. Thank and you. And I think car people just fell in love with you on Thanks. that show. The, the one, I mean, there's so many standout episodes, but the, the, the last go around. Yeah. I mean, you got punched. I did. You got punched. I mean, I did. walk me through that moment when it's happening, <laughs> the guy comes up, but I, I couldn't believe he punched you. I know. Well, you know, 
We knew that what I did to his car was gonna create a lot of emotion in him. I smashed his windshield with my guitar. We were pretending that we were a tribute band to his band that yeah. he was in. Uh -huh. um, so the plan was to keep the car in between me and him, yeah. but I got so into it, I actually went towards him and put my hand up yep. like, to high five him, mm -hmm. and I saw it happening. I saw the look on his face. He's one of those guys who, you know, gets very calm before he lashes out. So I kind of saw it happening, and it was a very strange sensation. Everything kind of went into slow motion. So I saw him rear back. Yeah. And so I was able to kind of turn a little bit, and he caught me right here. And it was a good punch. I mean, he's a big guy. He was. My wig flew off, my earwig came off, my sunglasses went down. But you went down? I went down, yeah. totally. But I popped right back up. I mean, after covering, because I knew he was coming at me again. <laughs> and then Chip ran over and said, you know, Glenn, Glenn, you're on over. Yeah. It's a prank. And then he felt so bad, obviously. But you know what? I deserved it. I mean, I smashed the guy's windshield with You guitar. smashed it with a guitar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you did. You had, if anyone's seen the episode, there was a buffer. I yeah. remember there was a buffer between the car and the guy, but the guy comes around and you're like, yes. yes. Yeah, and, and boom. Now, luckily, I did see it coming, so I was able to turn. He didn't get me in the eye or the nose or anything because literally four days later, I was on live TV doing an auction. Were you so. really? <laughs> You're like a stuntman. Let's let's walk down a little bit farther. You're, you're like a trained. Yeah, I should get stunt pay for that episode. Yeah, I mean, working with with Chip and stuff. You're a very smart car guy. How much? I mean, being around Chip does that bump up your car knowledge? Well, and also I mean, John Kramer absolutely. too. How much of these hanging around these guys definitely increase your car knowledge? Yeah, I mean, we started doing overhauling in 2003, and I was an absolute novice back then. Mm -hmm. And you know, slowly over the years, like you said, by hanging out with guys like Chip and with J.K. I, I, I am a sponge for, for their knowledge. So, and I, of course, do all my research on my own to you know warm up for these auctions and stuff. So, uh, I, I, if total car knowledge is 100, I'm probably at about a, you know, 45 or so. You're higher than that. Well, yeah, maybe, come yeah, on, you're higher certain, than that. Certain, certain makes and models I know a lot about, but other things I don't. How many do you have in your collection right now? Well, with that convertible now, it's not, I wouldn't really call it a collection, but that makes uh, four. That's a collection yeah. to me. Yeah. It's small, but it's a, it's a proud collection. Yeah. And what's the one car that you have that you won't get rid of? That would be my 85 911 Targa. That's yeah. the one that you're keeping? That's the one I'll never sell. Yeah, this, uh, this Camaro right here, this is 73. So, you know, kind of the beginning of the performance decline mm -hmm. in American muscle, but obviously, you know, still a beautiful design. You got the RS bumpers on there. This is a great car. Really nice paint on this car. Yeah, stunning car. Mm-hmm. And you know, I mean, I'm not a big like proponent of huge amounts of horsepower, mm -hmm. big engines. I like cars to be more reliable versus, you know, because every time you go on the street, like for instance, there's a lot here, a 68 custom charger. It's got a Helifant motor yes. in it. Oh my gosh, I've seen the one, yes. It's called Dumbo. Mm -hmm. Unbelievably built, unbelievable built. But I don't need a thousand horsepower, uh -huh. you know? <laughs> I want something a little bit more toned down uh -huh. that's just gonna be reliable and fun to cruise in. But so. what's your daily driver though? Well, my daily driver is a red eye. <laughs> so I, I, I don't need a lot of horsepower when I drive my car. I have a lot of horsepower, but I don't need a lot of horsepower. I'm talking more like, you know, the classic car yes. rebuilds. Yeah. You know, people are stuffing these enormous engines in these classic cars a lot, Dumbo. I love that build. Yeah. I think it's one of the best builds here. But again, I just, you know, you got to be very, very careful with a car like that. Uh -huh. A thousand horsepower. A lot of power. Yes. Well, Chris, yeah, yeah. thank you so much. Oh, you got a full day of doing TV. Pleasure. You have a lot yeah. going on here. And a, a treat to have you here on the show. Thank you so much, man. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, guys. Check out Meekum on Motor Trend and Motor Trend Plus. If you want your car, shop, or collection featured on the show, then shoot us an email at carsshopsandcollections at gmail.com. That's carsshopsandcollections at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. And be sure and subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes of Cars, Shops, and Collections. Yeah, 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 yeah.